Hey yo, what's happening YouTube? Here coming at you with a quick hitter. This one's gonna be short and sweet. Sticking with YouTube, one thing I found that was cool was okay when you make a comment, as soon as you click on the input, it it does that cool animation kinda it just kinda whoop, it kinda comes out from the center and highlights the input like that. Now, how do we do that? That's not that hard, believe it or not. Pretty easy to, to duplicate, and that's all we're going to do for this video. We're not even going to worry about anything else but this input. So I'm calling it underline input, and then code sandbox as usual. Uh, one dependency you want to add is style components. Just click add dependency, and immediately just type in styled components and click on it. And it will download the dependency for you. Uh, now, in the styles.css folder, we're going to use that. We're just going to add these styles width, 100 viewport width, height, 100 viewport height, display grid, justify item center, align item center, padding and margin of zero. And by default, that should be imported right into the index file. So that, all that does is put whatever we're working on right in the center just to make it look, you know, it looks proper. It looks proper. Um, so for this, this is going to be a quick hitter. Like I said, we will import styled from style components. And we are going to use the notorious React hooks for this. And we're only really using one hook, and that's going to be use state. Basic hook that is going to let us use state in a normal function like this. So I would say I like to do is I like to make a container right off the bat. And so we're just going to start with a container. And in that container, we're going to need a text input. I'm going to do that and make that a stock component as well. Style that input, and I'm going to do that attributes. And that takes a function of props. You can do an arrow function and return uh, a parenthesis return, or I guess an explicit return. I'm not sure which one it is, but it's the one we do <laughs> parentheses and curly braces. It directly returns an object. And then after all that is where you put the back picks for the styles. But in here is where you can do like, you know, you can put attributes right in here. You can put all kinds of stuff in here, you know, you can even, you know, placeholder area uh, attributes. You can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, so let's see. Width can be about, I guess, about 600 pixels or so. You can stick that input down here. And underneath it, we're going to put a div class name of underline. Inside underline, we're just going to put two empty self-closing divs. So at first I thought it was something to do with the bottom border, like somehow they animated the bottom border, but uh, I don't think that's what they do. Um, this is kind of what they do. I'm not exactly sure how they do it, but this is how I came up with it. Um, so this underline div is going to be that animated underline. Input's going to be the input. So pretty pretty straightforward, actually. Um, so let's see. One thing we can do is let's set up some basic stuff. We'll set up that underline. 
and we'll give underline a height of one pixel and a background uh I suppose like gray. I don't have to get too technical. Alright, so okay, we got our underline, we've got our input. Uh, I guess we could style up the input a little bit. So we want to get rid of the border. That's a cool little trick. You just put a zero and that basically takes rid of all the border. You don't have to put none or anything like that. You just put zero. Uh, so we'll get rid of that. And I uh, say like maybe margin. Bottom of like five pixels or so. Plot family, we'll, we'll just do Arial. Plot size, like 14 pixels. Width. 100%. All right, so that's looking that's looking pretty good. Um, so, how are we going to deal with this line? We need the line when you focus. Basically, it comes in when you focus, goes away when you leave. So all we need to do to put that together is have a state called focus. So we're using we're using um, we're using React hook. So we put it in an array. The first item is the state, and the second is the set function and you set that equal to use state and you can pass in a default or starting state which will be false um, i suppose if you wanted to keep track of the text at the same time you also have a use state function starting your, uh, your text off like that And then, pretty easily, we can say const on focus. The function that calls set focus and passes in true. And then on blur, set focus to false. On change, it's an event and sets text to event dot target dot value. Those would be your whoop, those would be your three input functions, and you just slap those onto the input. You just say on change equals on change. On focus equals on focus. On blur equals on blur. I guess you could also say value is text. Save that. And pass in this focus prop to the outer container. Like that. So we're going to be altering this underline when we see it focus. So one thing we're going to do is we'll just say and we'll use the uh, select all. So that's selecting all children, or in this case, both of those inner divs. So both those inner divs are going to be width. And this is where we're going to get them. We're going to do a function of props here, and this is where we're going to use props. Dot focus. So if it's focused, the width is going to be 50%. Otherwise, the width is 0 or 0%. Zero um, so, and we'll say background. I guess we'll just say, just for fun, we'll say it's orange-red. Why not? 
Um, then the underlying container will make it display flex and align items center and justify content center. And down here we'll put a transition on the width property of 0.25 seconds. So now I remembered everything. It should work. And it doesn't. Alright. Oh, we gotta probably put a height on this. And we'll put a height of uh, three pixels on there. Let's see if that works. There we go. So that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Um, and since the key is uh, the display the display flex and the justify content center, so justify content is going to push everything in from the horizontal to the center. So those two divs, since they have a zero width, they're going to be compressed to the middle basically taking up no space. And when we expand them to 50%, each of them is going to stay aligned to that center, but grow. So they're actually growing both out from the center. There's two separate divs at the same time. So, I mean, to make the official YouTube style, you do dark gray um, and probably make it just two pixels. The initial one is one pixel. And, you know, obviously you can do whatever you want. Um, pardon me for a second. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry about that. My nose is just stuffed up. So um, you can see they're growing out from the center. So in this transition, you can play with the transition. You know, if you wanted to, you could say make it take five seconds. And you can see how they're growing from the center uh, like that, you know. So you can put in, uh, uh, I guess you could put in like easing, there's different easing functions you can do that kind of controls how, how it pops out. Like uh, this might make it go slower into it. This might make it slow down at the end, ease out. Hard to see when it's so quick. I'm pretty sure ease out quick at first, slow at the end. But you can you can mess around with it. But um, that that's it right there. Pretty simple component. And uh, you know it's gonna you can make it fit. It'll fit any container. Uh, obviously, you could um, you could do something like. Instead of having this container with a set width, you can make this component reusable by um, by putting it into maybe like a uh, fragment. You can put it in a fragment instead. Now that I think about it, just for reusability's sake, and Then you can make the underlying just its own. You can make the underlying its own uh, component or style component, like so. And then just cut those out, put those in. Take that over. That seems to be the problem. Oh, 
closing tag on the fragment. Oh, got to get rid of the class selector there. Boom, there you have it. I don't know why that's so that should be all moved over in one space. Come on, prettier, do your job. I don't know why something so stupid bothers me, but it does. But this way, uh, now you can whatever container say now now you're changing your mind and you know like all right, I have a smaller container, so it's going to take, you can reuse it now, in other words. It's going to take up 100% of its container. Um, basically, by setting the width to 100 here, you just put a, any old wrap around it. Of course, you can make it um, a reusable component. And, you know, it maybe... Um, Maybe this is another way to do it too. Instead of instead of the fragment, let's leave a container around it like that, right? And have some props here. And make a new file in your source folder. I guess we'll just call it well, input.js. And we're going to need React. Uh, components and we'll take all of that out of there, paste it over here, all this cool input. Export default cool input. Save that. Come back over here. Click our app again. No longer need styled input here. No longer need use state. But we will import cool input from dot slash cool input. And then you just put different widths there. I guess we should put that in a put that in a div. Save that. And here we just say Which is going to be props.width pixels. And make sure we pass in, yep, passing the props here, pass it into here, over to the style component, and then you've got your, your different widths, you know, for whatever use case you have. Um, 
you know, obviously you could you could then switch over to um, for your placeholder. You can switch over to props on your placeholder as well. Even the type of input it is, you can switch the password, the password, you can switch the URL. You can control it all from uh, the, the out, outside here of the main component. And I wonder if there is even a way to structure to structure the props like that and see if you can set the default default props, see if that works. It doesn't seem to want to work. There we go. For some reason, I must have, maybe I had a typo or something, but there you can see, you can pass in um, placeholder, you can pass in type, but leave it as a default of text. Oh, I was passing it to the uh, container where I should have been passing it to the input. So either way, you pass the placeholder here. You could you could redo it here. It doesn't really matter. Um, I just wanted to show you the attributes. So boom, everything's going to be of type text, unless otherwise stated. So here's where you could say. Type this password. You know, type is number. So forth and so on. So the second one is a password. This one's now a number. You get the idea. I just wanted to show you that it was reusable. If you just you know you keep tweaking it and keep tweaking it, um, take advantage of default parameters very simple use case here with uh the react hooks to set uh to set us up and give us that cool underline effect that cool animation so this is a quick hitter one video series about 24 25 minutes long and this is a cool reusable component if you want to keep it throughout your app obviously you could even change the colors up any of these things you can change up from the outside with props. Any, basically anything you want to change in here, you can change. Um, the size of the underline, the color of the underline, um, the font. Um, yeah, any, anything at all. Um, easy to change. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.